<laughs> Merry Elfin Christmas. <laughs> oh Lord. So let's talk about Christmas or holiday traditions. Okay. Did you guys have any of those in your room? Like stuff that you did every year? Not really. No? No. The, the only... Like going to shop for a Christmas tree or is it a certain... Well, we had a fake tree. Oh, okay. We did too. But uh, we got to open one gift Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. That's yeah. That's pretty typical tradition. Yeah. If you have a holiday or Christmas tradition, leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys do for, for your tradition. We did... Um, we would always go to my grandmother's house on Christmas Eve. Yeah. And, and open gifts there from that side of the family. And then on Christmas morning, we'd be at, be at home. So it was almost like two Christmases. Yeah. Not as funny as four Christmases, <laughs> but it was still fun. <laughs> so for about the past six years, we've had a Christmas tradition, and that's going to wreaths across America. Mm -hmm. And so every veteran cemetery or national cemetery across the country, well, most participate in wreaths across America and close to Christmas, one weekend close to Christmas, which this year was the 14th of December, uh, they all do the same type of ceremony at noon and then lay wreaths on, on the graves of veterans or, or fallen service members, mm -hmm. which is really cool. We always went um, back with uh, the Combat Vets Motorcycle Association. We went to Andersonville for several, several years. Mm -hmm. And then last year, they did the first year they did at Fort Benning yeah. on post, and we went to that one. And now that we're traveling full-time, we just decided that wherever we are at at the time is the one that we're going to go to. Yeah. This year was no different. We went to Reese Across America again this year, but this year we happened to be in the Fort Worth area next mm -hmm. to your parents. So we went to the Dallas-Fort Worth National Cemetery yeah. and participated in Reese Across America. If we look to the answer... As to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it wasn't because here in this land we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses or stars of David, they add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom. Their lives ended in places called Bella Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Pork Chop Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. As for the enemies of freedom, those who are potential adversaries, they will be reminded that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it. We will not surrender for it now or ever. We are Americans. That is a massive cemetery. It is huge. I had no idea. I wasn't expecting it to be that big. No. I wasn't expecting the That's cemetery crazy. to be that big. I wasn't expecting there to be that many people there. It was beautiful. Grounds. And yeah. It was very well taken care of. Yeah. That's very good pretty. views. Um, yeah. Landscaping was great. The um, the ceremony was good. We couldn't get really close to no, where they were actually doing the ceremony. There so, so many people. The ones we went to previously in Andersonville, Georgia, and at Fort Benning have always been kind of really small yeah and very personal and so we didn't even have to get there super early no it wasn't a lot of people yeah it just didn't click in in our minds that dallas fort worth was going to be so huge yeah it was like really like going to a uh, like a sporting event yeah getting in and out of there the traffic uh, was lined up for miles 
We parked half a mile away from the entrance. Yeah, and then from the entrance to where they were doing the ceremony was about another half mile. Yeah. So about a mile from our truck to where the <laughs> ceremony was, mm -hmm. and then had to walk back. Okay. Good. Well worth it. Oh yeah. Great ceremony, great place, great people. We ran into some subscribers out there, mm -hmm. Kirk and Deb. Yeah. And uh, they're thinking about going full time. So if you guys are watching, hi. <laughs> and it was great to meet you, and, yeah. and thanks for watching. And um, well, I, I had to do a little work. You did. <laughs> you, you got to play medic for a little bit. Yeah, there was like a, a JROTC group there that was at Reese Across America participating in the in the ceremony and you know one of the the young ladies who was in the ROTC I guess either she locked her knees during the national anthem in the Pledge of Allegiance or you know or she just got hot yeah she, um, already is. she was wearing a sweater and even though it was only 60 degrees all right buddy even though it was only 60 degrees uh, wearing the sweater and the sun was shining down and and when I was getting a, a medical history from her you know, yeah. said she hadn't drank very much water and didn't eat breakfast. So that's all contributors to that. But we were able to get her stabilized. She was good and got her out with EMS and she's good to go. You missed <laughs> about a quarter of the ceremony. <laughs> but it's okay. It's yeah. cool. I was glad to help. And I'm glad she's okay. And um, we got to talk to one of the JROTC instructors afterwards yeah. who thanked us. And um, it was absolutely you know, my pleasure to, to help out where I can. And just glad that she was okay. Glad yeah. it wasn't worse than, than yeah. what it was. Because... It, it had it been worse, it would have been difficult for EMS to get in there. There were so, many, so people many people jammed into a tight space, and even to get her out of the golf cart was, was a little pretty tight. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, can't wait for Lauren to get in. Mm -hmm. She's coming in for Christmas, and she'll be here this week. We do have one more Christmas tradition, and we we normally watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation on the on Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. Yeah. yeah, so that's one of our. One of our deals, and we just thought—I think we just started a new Christmas tradition with Scamper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got Scamper and a camper. He's exclusive to our Instagram account. You won't see him anywhere else, but um, he's been popping around all over the camper. Yeah, and doing little little pictures, and he's in a different <laughs> place every day. So that's been fun. It's kind of like our little version of Elf on a Shelf, yeah. or Scamper and a camper. That was Leslie's idea. Yeah, we saw I like it. it. <laughs> It's pretty cool. So if you haven't seen Scamper, go over to our Instagram and check that out. And um, if you like Scamper, we'll bring him back next year. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And um, I don't know where we'll be next year, mm. but, but we'll figure it out. Um, at the end of all of our videos, we honor a fallen hero, and we want to do uh, we want to do three heroes this time. Mm -hmm. And it's a little different because most of the heroes that we honor at the end of our videos are are service members who are killed in action overseas in a named conflict, uh, something like that. Yeah. But this is a little different. A couple weeks ago, there was a um, an active shooter event on the Naval Air Station in Pensacola. And there was uh, three, um, three airmen that were on the installation. Mm -hmm. They heard the shots. And reports say they actually ran toward the bullets. They were, ran toward the gunfire to help save others and According to um, the first responders, it helped. They, they, they saved some lives. I don't know the details of it, yeah. but ultimately um, they sacrificed their lives so that others uh, would be safe. And so for these families, they're going to be without these, these airmen for the holidays. This is pretty tragic. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we, that we honor the, them. And not every hero dies in a, in a conflict overseas we consider acts of terrorism acts of war and so sometimes unfortunately we have we have war at home at home mm -hmm. yes yeah, so we want to honor uh, these airmen um, I'll try to get their their names right we have airman Muhammad Sami Haytham airman apprentice Cameron Scott Walters and ensign Joshua Caleb Watson um, one was 19 years old one was 21 years old and the other was 23 years old so tragic really young. yeah um, we hope that you have a great holiday season. If you are ce celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you're celebrating Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Joyous Kwanzaa. If you're not celebrating anything, just have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that one. <laughs> we, we want to include everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that was a new one. <laughs>
All right. Well, we appreciate you watching. Stick around. Help us honor these fallen heroes. And then we'll probably kick up some uh, Christmas lights and stuff toward the end there that we got to see around the Dallas-Fort Worth yeah. area. All right. We will see you next time. Bye.